Hello, I'm Zoran Gavoyich, and this is Morgan Foster's Face on a Gremlin, and we're a few of the many talented people behind the viral teen slasher romantic high school comedy music video, Social Media Asicus. <laughs> Today is the five year anniversary of Social Media Asicist, and I wanted to celebrate the occasion by having the video get age restricted by YouTube. Wait, that can't be right. But that's what happened. So if you're having trouble finding the video on YouTube, you can always check out our Facebook page for the full uncensored version, or maybe I'll put an all ages version up shortly. And if I do, the link will be up here. And if not, I'm pointing at absolutely nothing. Anyway, what I'm actually here to do today is give you a frame by frame analysis of all the mostly horror Easter eggs that I lovingly hid in the music video. But before I get into it, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all the fans that have gotten us to over 50 million views. 50 million, that's insane! And a big thank you to all of our subscribers out there because thanks to you, I was able to get one of these awards. Release. Because of your continued support and the donations from our Kickstarter backers, we were finally able to make the long overdue sequel, Social Media Asicus 2, on and on. And we're together in this, whether you like it or not, so wake up! So without further ado, here's the greatest five year anniversary social media asicist easter egg video you ever saw. Did somebody call me? Not ever. We start things off in Jason's closet with a series of posters from Critters, New Year's Evil, and High Tension. Oddly enough, it's a French movie, but I found a Chinese poster for it. On top of the shelf, you can see some random gore from one of Jason's victims, and that hand is a low-carb comedy deep cut. It is actually Cusperito from our failed MTV pilot starring the one and only Mark Cusper. You slept with my wife? Oh yeah! I did! In Jason's drawer, you can see a silver shamrock medallion guaranteed to turn any kid's face into a pile of bugs. Then we can see a copy of our comic book mystery afoot. And under that, we have the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic, The Nightmare Warriors. Obviously, Jason's shirt is referenced to Camp Crystal Lake, where he drowned and started his campaign of vengeance. And the other shirt in the drawer is a sad, yet still funny, Friday the 12th shirt. And then we see the hand of another one of Jason's victims. Behind Jason's well-worn chucks, we see Sam from the underappreciated Trick or Treat anthology film. Then we get to Jason's big reveal, and there he is! played by Swan Neck superstar Jeremy Connie wearing the Friday the 13th Part 4 mask by NECA. He's standing in front of a forest poster that's supposed to represent his normal hunting grounds. But then we pull out to reveal his teenage bedroom as he pulls his emo hair through his axe hole. In Jason's room, we see posters from Maniac Cop, Maniac Reanimator, and Phantasm 2. Then we have a clown popcorn monster from Killer Clowns from Outer Space and Ash from Army of Darkness. Then out of focus behind his arm is a hack slash comic by fellow Chicagoan Tim Seeley. And on top of that, there are some blurry DVDs for Leprechaun 3 and two others I can't quite remember because it was five years ago, but I think think they are not another teen movie and the Wizard of Gore. As for the items on the corkboard, I'm gonna come back to those later. Now we go down for breakfast in a beautifully choreographed scene with the Voorhees family. And I always get comments about how Jason doesn't have a sister or his mom is Pamela. Just don't worry about it guys, this is an alternate version of Jason, okay? Think of it like Into the Spider-Verse, but with more murder and less responsibility. The Voorhees family is played by Ruth Kaufman, Beth Ann Barbieri, and Darren Stevens from our 50s trailer, Attack of the Cosmic Frank Einstein. We need to kill Frank Einstein. Wait, you're gonna kill me just because I'm his brother? No, sorry, Frank. I meant the creature we are referring to as Frank Einstein. That's a stupid name. On the TV, you can see the band Common Shiner singing in a garage like all bands do. We see a Christopher Lee S. Dracula on the Monster Times newspaper. And as a special unplanned cameo, you can see myself and Zach Whittington, the DP, in the reflection of the microwave. Time for school as we arrive at West Craven Slasher High with a blood stain and some amazing West Craven fan art by So Incredible and Deviant Art. Check out her work at the link in the description. Inside the school, we see a frustrated Candyman holding a copy of If Chins Could Kill by the greatest gift to horse and sliced heads, Bruce Campbell. Behind him, the creeper from Jeepers Creepers is randomly wearing cold McGrath's backpack from Infamous 2. Didn't mean to make that reference, but there you have it. Then down the hall, you see the arm of Leslie Vernon, who we'll get a better look at later. This was our 90s horror shot, with Ghostface from Scream wearing a Boris Karloff Frankenstein's monster shirt. Then we have the Fisherman from I Know What You Did Last Summer, played by the original Redbeard John Morrison. And over here is the killer Noxzema girl from Urban Legends. They're all harassing the Tim Curry Pennywise from the It TV miniseries. And in the background there, you can see a couple of random slasher killers. I do want to point out that the music video was funded by Morgan Foster and myself, so we didn't have enough money to get every horror movie costume that we wanted, so you're gonna see some generic characters in the background from time to time, but that doesn't mean they still can't murder you, right? Right? Ah, let's keep going. Next up is Samara from The Ring, or if you prefer, Sadako from the Japanese Ringu. She's standing in front of a Slashdance poster that's a parody of the 80s steel worker stripper movie, Flashdance. Some fun little text on the bottom points out that if you don't bring a virgin to the dance, you will be disqualified. Yeah, I always pictured the end of the year dance as the first time that our slashers get a chance to murder someone. Kind of a parallel between losing your virginity at the prom, but a little 
or murdery? Anyway, she's handing a tape to one of my favorite slashers, Leslie Vernon. And if you haven't seen Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, go watch it now on Amazon Prime Video. It is by far one of my favorite horror films as proven by my Halloween costume. And now we come to the introduction of everyone's favorite child molesting dream monster, Freddy Krueger, played by the often yelling Mark Cusper. <laughs> Behind Freddy, you can see Norman Bates from Psycho, played by Common Shiner keyboardist and vocalist Michael Brooks. Also from Common Shiner, we have guitarist Jake Chandler in the Pig Mask from Saw. Now I knew you said my name right there. Nope! In the background, there are some more random slashers, including one played by the talented singer-songwriter Laura Green, aka Lady Laura. Check out her amazing songs on her YouTube channel and hear her on Morgan's newest album, Life Neurotica. Plug completed, back to the video! At Jason's locker, we see a biography for Kane Hodder, the man that played Jason Voorhees in Friday 7 through X, as well as Victor Crowley in the Hatchet series. FYI, his biography is really inspiring, and when that man strangles you for a photo op, he really strangles you for a photo op. In the locker, you can see some crime scene photos from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the return of the Hack Slash comic, a common Shiner sticker, and a drawing lovingly made for Jason by his sister. In the background of the next shot, Ghostface returns, and this time he's talking to his much more jovial orange face cousin, Herb. Now to the introduction of Carrie. Whoops! Spoilers! Sorry, I hope you watched the video because that was kind of supposed to be a secret. Carrie is played by another low-carb comedy alum, Whitney Jones. He who is beaten by a bunny and lives becomes a bunny himself. What? This slow motion walk entrance was modeled after Mia Kirshner's entrance in Not Another Teen Movie. We can see Carrie is holding a copy of George McFly's book, A Match Made in Space, from Back to the Future. Behind her, we have the return of Norman Bates, another Jake Chandler performance, this time as Billy Chapman from Silent Night, Deadly Night. Over here is Morgan Foster as a random slasher, and this mask is the same one Old Man Hotter wore in our short School's Out Forever. That's must see TV! Here we've got a guy in a Hannibal Lecter mask from Silence of the Lambs, and a whole bunch of random slashers, including the always dancing Jamie Gates. And finally, a shot with no Easter eggs. Well, that didn't last. Back there, we see Laura's hipster slasher, Billy Chapman again, more random slashers, and a not green goblin. Ah, now some recognizable faces, er, masks. I'm personally playing Michael Myers in this shot, and then we've got my crony's leather face, played by Jamie Gates of dancing slasher fame, and Pinhead from Hellraiser, trying to work a lament configuration like a Rubik's Cube. He's played by the often slapped Charlie Carroll. Why? Also, as a side note, Pinhead really should never wear turtlenecks. But on the shirt. Oh! Behind them you can see Laura Green again, but now she's donning Louise's rabbit hat from Bob's Burgers. For no reason except Whitney Jones had one on set with her. And contrasting Whitney's happy bunny is our sad Jason. Which I should mention is actually not played by Jeremy Connie in these shots. Unfortunately, due to scheduling, Jeremy had to be replaced by another blue-eyed swan-necked individual, Paul DuPont. And luckily, nobody noticed, but still to this day, Jeremy's kicking himself for not playing Jason in every shot. Sorry, buddy. Now we come to Stalking 101 and the most commented about cameo. This guy. Who the f is this guy? Well, that's Unhealthy Doug, played by another low-carb comedy regular, Lee Russell. <laughs> Unhealthy Doug was created for the video Jason Voorhees' personal trainer. Originally, he was just a joke reference to the actor that played Pinhead. Doug Bradley? But Lee's sausage snacking performance was so good, we wanted to include him in another horror short. Since then, he's appeared in Sausage Fingers. Now let's get you some sausages, bitch. And makes a return in Social Media as a kiss, too. Is this, is this your first time using Bumble? So, he's an original slasher we created, and rest assured, Unhealthy Doug will return. Oh, cool. Back in the class, we see the return of the Creeper, a random luchador killer, Lady Laura, Chucky from The Bride of Chucky, and a killer from Your Next that also happens to be the same mask that wrestler Eric Rowan wears. So, I guess it's a wrestling Easter egg too? Jason falls asleep and we get this really cool shot we filmed in a very tiny patch of woods at my mom's place in Batavia, Illinois. Both Morgan and I tried to fill in for Whitney, but I think her performance was better. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are nailing it. Jason wakes up to the same references in the background, and then we get this test. As you can see, there are Cheeto stains from Unhealthy Doug, as well as test questions that reference Cabin in the Woods, Wrong Turn, and many slasher tropes. Here's a look at the full test, including a Toby Hooper Funhouse reference and one question that was never meant to be seen. As the Your Next Eric Rowan Killer exits, Carrie writes down her number, which of course is 976 Evil, a film directed by Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England. Now we return to Jason's room for some high-energy cusper antics that took a couple takes to get right. Three one thousand four. <laughs> <laughs> so behind our heroes, we see some photos on the walls that reference The Burning, Sleepaway Camp 2, Scary Movie, Satan's Little Helper, Hatchet, and the low-carb comedy videos Jason Voorhees' Personal Trainer, low-carb comedy's Hellraiser, and School's Out Forever. Now onto the most reference-heavy piece in the video, Jason's Corkboard. You only see parts of it throughout the video, but I'm gonna go through the whole thing in an effort to save time. <laughs> off. 
From the top, we see photos of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, a signed photo of Wes Craven, the Jin from Wishmaster, Norman Bates' very dead mother from Psycho, the Smiley Killer from Smiley, Uncle Sam, Fat Joey from Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, a shish kebab murder from Happy Birthday to Me, Laurie Strode from Halloween, a nice shot of Jason and his buddy Freddy, and the Killers from The Strangers. Onto artwork, we have the Sugar Plum Fairy from Cabin in the Woods, a drawing of the well from The Ring, a My Bloody Valentine Valentine, some Cabin in the Woods merman art, an American Gothic style shining poster, a poster for Mardi Gras Massacre, a graph of victims from the Slasher TV series Harper's Island, a postcard from New York referencing Jason Takes Manhattan, a drawing of Jason and Carrie that predicts the end of the music video, and another postcard from the incredible short film Legend of Beaver Dam. Got a couple notes here, one from the Fisherman from I Know What You Did Last Summer, and another one reminding Jason not to play the board game Mousetrap with Jigsaw from Saw. Did somebody- no! Back on the board, we have a Bort Quickie Mart name tag from The Simpsons, a Save the Clock Tower flyer from Back to the Future, a Vote Saxon button from Doctor Who, an article from Final Destination 2, an Amazon wish list for machetes, a photo of space referencing Jason X, and a map of Crystal Lake with notes referencing kills from Friday the 13th, parts 2, 3, 4, Freddy vs. Jason, and the rest. And finally, for those wondering what these lists are, well, they reference every slasher movie that came out up until 2014 when we filmed this video. So even if you can't really read it, technically, we referenced every slasher movie ever. Now we jump into the bathroom, which takes its inspiration from Jim Carrey and his getting ready montage in The Mask. On the walls, we see Cheerleader Camp, Jamie Lee Curtis from Trading Places, Camilla from the 2014 Stage Fright, a sexy lady Chucky, the foot of the guy from Maniac, and a couple obscured photos that are repeats anyway, so let's move on to the makeover, where Jason tries on his burlap sack outfit from Friday 13th Part 2, a more blue than purple NES outfit, and his classic Freddy vs. Jason outfit. In the background, you can see a poster for Silent Night, Evil Night, aka Black Christmas. Then there's Dr. Giggles, Alone in the Dark, Sleepaway Camp 2, Child's Play, Hack Slash, Invincible, a Dean Winchester Supernatural t-shirt, and a Jason X mask, which we we were going to use as one of Jason's outfits, but couldn't get the full costume in time. Luckily, we fixed this Jason X error in the sequel. Get away from me, face Jason. <laughs> <laughs> For Freddy's reverse angle, we use the exact same shot three times. Freddy is reading the horror bible Fangoria with stories about Children of the Corn, Ozzy Osbourne, Twilight Zone the movie, Firestarter, the Ramones, and Carrie in yet another hint to the identity of Jason's dream girl. This final hand clap from Freddy was inspired by Jeff Daniels in Dumb and Dumber, which itself was referencing Pretty Woman, so that's like a reference square. We whip pan to Jason and Carrie's date with Jason holding the Necronomicon from Evil Dead 2, Kane Hodder's biography, and a container of the stuff. Carrie happily accepts the stuff and then sings a little song about it. Step one. Cut a hole in the box, step two, put your stuff in a box, get some stuff in a box. While studying, we see a painting of a phantasm sphere death, a more scary stories to tell in the dark book, some tales of Lovecraft, Necronomicons from Evil Dead 1 and 2, and a composition notebook that references the forgotten Ashton Kutcher classic, The Butterfly Effect. Once Jason opens his very on-brand laptop, the references ramp up. The video is obviously of the band Common Shiner. Then the sidebar references more low-carb comedy videos, including Saw 4, Evil Balloon, School's Out Forever, The Comic Vault of the Dead, Lady Lede, A Doctor Horrible Musical, and Vampires the Movie. Vampire! And that handsome screamer is Zach Whittington, the man that filmed this entire music video. Under the video, we see the username Warwicky the Davis, which references Warwick Davis, the actor that played the Leprechaun. The number of subscribers is the total box office for all the theatrically released Leprechaun films. The view count is a combination of all the band members' birthdays. July 22nd for Morgan, December 24th for VJ, May 25th for Michael, and May 6th for Jake. The likes are actually the release date for the aforementioned Vampires the Movie. Yeah, vampires! Summer. 7185. And finally, the ad in the corner is for D. Schneider's Strangeland. And now the date continues reference free with just Jason's blue eyes and Carrie's adorable acting to get you through. And here comes Michael Myers, now played by low carb comedy cohort David Schneider. I just found out my credit score is 710. Dave and I traded off the role of Michael Myers, but I think he filled out the costume much better than I did. The snap sound effect is a reference to Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Leatherface here is played in this one shot by Greg Hess from our Monsters of Science web series. <laughs> Moving on, they drag Jason away and slam this digital door in a reference to the fame shot from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Back in the bathroom, we have all the same references from before, plus a shrunken head and a bloody baby head in the medicine cabinet. Then Jason's dad appears in a standard horror movie mirror jump scare. Back in the bedroom, we have the same references, plus a severed leg from another Jason victim. In the photo album, we have yours truly as Dracula and Whitney and Jeremy playing the young versions of Jason's parents. On the opposite page, there's the mummy from Bubba Hotep and Vico the Carpathian from Ghostbusters 2. On the next page, we barely see a photo of Jason's first victim, but pulling out, we see that it's my pet Pomeranian, the doctor. Doctor, it's a little, it's a little windy out. 
Jason's dad leaves, and behind the door we see a poster for April Fool's Day, signed to myself from the director, and an infographic from Cabin in the Woods. Can you tell I'm a fan of this film? He signed it. The same bedroom references continue until Jason opens up his laptop and we see more hack slash and Sam and Dean from Supernatural in the background. Now for the computer. The first thing you'll notice is one, the web address jumps out of the address bar, and two, there are a ton of Easter eggs here. So Jason's username is Sean S. Cunning Fan 1980 as a reference to the man that directed and produced so many Friday the 13th films. The pages Jason likes are our website, lowcarbcomedy.com, Common Shiner, Terror in the Isles, which is a local Chicago group that premiered our video on the big screen and produces the Massacre and Sci-Fi Spectacular Film Festivals in Chicago. Jason is also a Crystal Lake camper, despite the shirt that he stole from one of their dead counselors. As for groups, we see references to Motel Hell, Cry Wolf, Hostel, Slumber Party Massacre, a misspelled brain scan, Cherry Falls, and The People Under the Stairs. There's an ad for the killer from The Dentist, Dr. Finestone. Jason's news feed includes a post from Mary Lou from Prom Night 2, with comments from Jeremy Melton from Valentine and Angela Franklin from Night of the Demons, referencing the boob melting scene from Part 2. Carrie's username is another hint to her identity, The Girl 1976, which is the year Carrie was released. And finally on the side, Jason's suggested killers include Smiley from Smiley, Night Owl from the original Stage Fright, Cusper, Mick from Wolf Creek, Alice from Alice Sweet Alice, and when we scroll down, there's Debbie from Bloody Birthday, Chrome Skull from Laid to Rest, and Old Man Hotter from School's Out Forever. I just, what the f the comments for Carrie's photo are from actresses in previous Carrie films. Chloe Moretz, not Morentz, from the 2013 remake, Emily Burgle from The Rage Carrie 2, Angela Bettis from the 2002 TV remake, whose profile picture is from her horror movie May, and Adam Sandler, who didn't play a role, but his sketch, Oh Mom, is a direct reference to Carrie. They're all gonna laugh at you! I'll walk, I guess. No! Under the comments, we have a great ad referencing Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, with artwork by dentist and independent artist Catherine Yanda, who is a great dancer, and you should check out her art at tandjellybeans.com. In the next photo, Michael Myers is dressed as Bob from the original Halloween. Carrie is in a Little Red Riding Hood outfit meant to reference Anna Paquin's character in Trick or Treat. And in her basket, we see a couple of critters. Go fetch. The comments are from Dr. Loomis, Michael Myers' arch nemesis from the Halloween films, and The Breather from Student Bodies. Speaking of breathing, I always liked that one of the options for photos was to breathe heavily. The next photo features more art by Catherine with Carrie stabbing Michael, and comments by Pluto from the original Hills Have Eyes, and Stuntman Mike from Death Proof, who is of course, crying. Our final photo includes one last comment that references The Prowler. The Slash Dance event page has mostly the same references except for the location of West Craven's Slasher High, which is 1428 Elm Street, Haddonfield, Illinois. A mashup of the house from Nightmare on Elm Street and the town from the Halloween series. Also, there's a few nut punch jokes thrown in for good measure. <laughs> Jason ponders what to do with a blurry terror train and just before dawn photo in the background, as well as an original killer clown drawing from Charlie Kyoto. Once he decides to go, the leprechaun returns to dance it up, those moves being busted out by Beth Ann Barbieri, who played Jason's sister and was briefly a stand-in for Whitney Jones. Jason grabs his suit and transitions us to another Back to the Future reference, framing the parents in the doorway a la the end of Back to the Future with the match made in space book returning. Finally, we arrive at the slash dance. Common Shiner is playing on stage next to Unhealthy Doug, while the Your Next Eric Rowan killer returns alongside Leslie Vernon, a Cabin in the Woods unicorn, this scarecrow guy who brought his own costume, and a bunch of virgin human victims. During this close-up, we get Morgan in the white mask dancing with Rebecca Grossman, who is the wife of Lee Russell, aka Unhealthy Doug. Behind them, Charlie rocks out as Pinhead with a blurry killer from The Collector. Unhealthy Doug sings into Twizzlers, and then actor Lee magically jumps into a baby face mask to slow dance with the Cabin in the Woods unicorn, all while Herb and the Creeper watch in the background. As Jason fights through the crowd, we see Leatherface, Pinhead, the unicorn, hipster white mask girl, not played by Laura this time, the Scarecrow, Ghostface, and the Gorilla, who is a very special low-carb comedy character. The Gorilla was the star of the first films we ever made as a group, Mondo Monkey A Go Go and Mondo Monkey Episode 2. Now, I say films, but basically they were just a series of gorilla stunts, ALF jokes, and movie rip-offs, but it was really nice to have Dave Schneider reprise the role from all those years ago. Now back to the dance! As Jason sees Carrie, we don't see any new references, but here's a fun behind-the-scenes bit with Lee. Hello, guys. Guys, hello. This Hi. Uh, you guys know what a king queen looks like, right? This, this, this one right there. This doesn't work. There you go. Coming back to Jason, we see Ghostface and the Collector, as well as Jake from Common Shiner in a creepy Purge-esque mask. Carrie is happy there are no references in her shot. And back at Jason, we add Cusper in the pig face mask and the triumphant return of Jigsaw, played by yours truly. Now I know you- Bit of history about me and Jigsaw. In 2006, I created a Saw 4 parody a year before Saw 4 came out. Since then, we created a different Saw parody every year until we finally retired Jigsaw in 2010. 
I then came out of retirement just for this one shot four years later. And faster than you can say continuity error, my time as Jigsaw was over, as Jason walks away from Carrie's reveal with a digital blood splash. Yes, the wide shot was comped together with blood being poured over a bottle, but the close-up we did in one glorious take. And blood dog. Now we enter the split-screen sequence that's a direct reference to Carrie, complete with locked doors, red lights, and a bucket knocked out prom king. Then Pinhead and everyone realize they're f <laughs> whoops, sorry, screwed, with Chucky, Pennywise, and Billy Chapman in the background. Leatherface is killed by a pratfall that should have killed actor Jamie Gates as well. <laughs> Then Pinhead is choked by chains, but this time he's played by Morgan Foster instead of Charlie. Still better than having him played by Michael Myers. That's just silly. The Comet Shiner band members are killed with their respective instruments, and it's all censored here so I don't get age restricted. And Michael and Morgan are electrocuted exactly like the vice principal and English teacher in Carrie. Then Unhealthy Doug dies of a heart attack. But I don't trust that he's really dead. Hey, you can't trust Unhealthy Doug. Can you trust? And then all our amazing extras die in this wide shot. How many of them died? Well, just check out the kill count my buddy James A. Janice just posted on his YouTube channel. You can click the link up here, or you can click the one in the description. Either way, go watch it! And now Jason returns to watch Whitney give the most incredible bit of subtle acting I've ever seen. Man, I love that look. So good! Jason runs away from a mostly out of frame me in a white mask. The two of them kiss in a shot we filmed on a furniture dolly, and was originally supposed to have a dead body fall from the ceiling between them, but we ran out of time. They grab hands over the dead body of Michael Myers, and as they walk away, you can see artists Catherine Yonda in the background doing an impressive dead body stretch. Jason and Carrie are then shot 21 times, but for fear of getting age restricted, here's Jake Chandler and Charlie Carroll getting dance shot instead. Our two heroes are killed by this guy and his impossible handgun. This is Dave Erlakis, a very talented Chicago improviser and friend who created the Awkward Spaceship YouTube channel, which you should check out, especially the videos I helped him with. Dave is dressed in an overly large cop shirt that has a barely visible Amity Island patch referencing the movie Jaws. My voice is heard over the walkie calling him Agent Brody, which was my attempt to lower his rank from sheriff. Unfortunately, that makes no sense because he should have been a deputy. I'm an idiot. In any event, the Jaws reference was calling out the next video we planned to make for Common Shiner's song Sharks, which would have retold the entire film Jaws in four minutes. Last Common Shiner broke up and I moved to California so it wasn't meant to be. But who knows what the future holds, as Common Shiner might pop up when you least expect them. Just like Carrie and Jason. <laughs> now this laugh at the end is actually from Vampires the Movie and is an homage to Vincent Price's laugh at the end of Michael Jackson's Thriller. And that's the end of the video, according to most people. But I do get so many comments asking, what happened to Freddy? Well, watch after the credits, because he makes an awkward return, holding a mixtape that he wants to play for his now-dead friends. The tape is actually an Amy Grant tape that Morgan randomly had in his car. Also a fun fact about Mark Cusper, he overheats very easily, and if you ever see him being filmed from the waist up, there's a good chance he's not wearing pants. Also, we did a couple different variations of the ending, so here's a peek at what could have been. Yep, 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 I found my mixtape! And you're all dead. Guys, I found my mixtape! Oh! Oh my god! I found it! I found the ultimate mixtape! Oh! What? Oh! Not good, not good, not good. How did you get up there? Oh god, oh, I stepped in you! I found the Amy Grant tape! I... C come on, she is not that bad. And that's the real end, so congratulations to all of you that stuck with us through this peek behind the bloodstained curtains of social media asochists. So keep sharing the video, leave us a comment, buy a t-shirt, and just subscribe to our channel. We may not post regularly, but when we do, you know it's gonna be something good. So thanks for watching, and I hope you at least saw some- Did somebody call for Jigsaw? Come <gasps> Oh god, put up the end card before YouTube age restricts us! Oh, I'm just gonna saw you. I'm gonna oh, saw you so good. Oh, you yeah. Shut up, shut up, oh, shut up. You're yeah. all of it's really hard to There's concentrate so when, you're, when you're talking so much. Oh, oh, just bleed. Stop talking and just bleed. <sighs> 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 Oh, my arm's getting tired. Uh, you all right there, buddy? Yo, oh, oh no, yeah, yeah, you're not coming back from that. Whew, that is a mess.